Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video, and welcome to a video where today we're going to be ranking Linkin Park's albums from best to worst. Not in that order. Should have phrased that differently. We're going to be ranking them from worst to best. Sorry. Um, so I'll be starting with that, what I think is the worst album from Linkin Park, and then we will progress until I um, reveal what I think the best album by Linkin Park is. Uh, now I saw, I think his... YouTube name is ARTV, something like that. I saw him do this, and I watched his video, and I was like, I disagree with you to some extent on your picks, but that's your opinion, man. So instead of, you know, going into the comment section and leaving a real nasty comment, I'm going to go ahead here and make my own video and uh, present my own opinion of how the albums should be ranked. So that's what we're doing, and I think, you know, in uh, in alliance with that, um, you know, this is just my opinion. I really shouldn't have to mention this before any review video as any review video I do is going to be an opinion. Um, will I use facts in it? Absolutely. To try and prove my point. But that doesn't mean that I think my opinion is the only opinion. And it doesn't mean that I think my opinion is better than anyone else's. I just think mine is right. As you do with your own opinions. So, Please don't attack me for it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying here. All right. So, worst album by Linkin Park. If you watched that review video I put out of the One More Light album of Linkin Park, you know my least favorite album from Linkin Park is The Hunting Party. So that's at number seven for me. They have seven studio albums. And I guess I should also mention that I'm not doing the remix albums. So Recharged and Reanimation, not on there. Collision Course is not on there. We're just doing the main studio albums that they have put out, which there are seven of. And my least favorite one out of all of those is The Hunting Party. Excuse me. And probably going to get some hate for that. I imagine that if people watched my content more, I would get more hate for it. Mainly because if I... um, I am in the Linkin Park subreddit quite a bit. I lurk around in there, I post a little bit sometimes, and the general consensus that I get from there, from the diehard Linkin Park fan base, is that The Hunting Party is a pretty good album, that it ranks probably in the top five out of the seven, and I can see that. I mean, you know, I love the instruments on the album, uh, very hardcore, love that very much. I, I'm not musically inclined, so I'm just going to be saying what's ever on my mind here. All right, <laughs> so I'm going to say some stupid stuff and it's going to, you know, make me seem like an idiot, but I'm just trying to um, make my point and get it across as clearly as I can, uh, why I like something, why I don't like something. Um, and there really is only one reason why I don't like The Hunting Party as much as the other Linkin Park albums, and it's because... The vocals are extremely weak on the album. Um, and it's not that Chester has lost any of the power he had in his voice. You could tell when you were listening to the songs that the power was still there. I I just... I, maybe it was poor mixing or something because it, the vocals just don't sound all that powerful in comparison to the powerful instruments they're lined up with, you know? It just... It doesn't sound good. You know, they don't sound the way they need to. You know, if they uh, if they had the intensity like they did in the in Hybrid Theory and Meteora, the Hunting par Party, excuse me, would probably be in my top three. I would I would not lie about that. But the vocals feel so weak that I can't just get into it. I can't like with any other album I can get into it. With the vocals and the Hunting Party, I just can't get into it. You know it. And you really got to listen to the album for yourself to understand that. Um, and I first noticed this when the album was coming out in Guilty All the Same. You know, I, I heard that and I thought, oh, the vocals are a little weak, you know. I, in comparison to the instruments they're going up against, they feel a little weak. You know, I, no I noticed that a little bit in Guilty All the Same. And then I believe the second single was Until It's Gone. I can't remember. It was three years ago. Um my memory is essentially dog shit. So, 
you know, and then I, I would begin to notice uh, with all of the other songs on the album, and it just, it kind of ruined it for me. Not not to a point where I hate the album, not to a point where I dislike the album, but to a point where I rank it lower than the other Linkin Park albums. So, yeah, I mean, my main reasoning behind not liking The Hunting Party are the weak vocals. And people who like the album are very aware that the vocals are weak. So it's not something that's just my opinion, at least I don't think. Uh, well, it could be considered opinion, but I would say it's a popular opinion about the album, uh, that the vocals are pretty weak. So I'm not sitting here trying to trash talk it. I'm just stating my feelings on it and uh, what I've noticed other people say as well. Um, so The Hunting Party is my least favorite one on the uh, on the list of the Linkin Park albums. And uh, I would like to, before we get to the next one, I would like to point out that Yes, in the One More Light review video, I did say that it would be hard for me to rank these. But after watching ARTV's video, I was like, all right, I disagree with that. So I'm going to put out my own ranking of the albums. We already covered this. Let's go. Uh, sixth rank album is probably Living Things, I would have to say. Uh, Living Things is probably the second worst album for me. I think it is... Just, it feels very odd to me. And I like the album. Don't get me wrong. I like the album. It just, it feels very odd to me in the sense that I feel like, I don't even know how to describe it. It, I don't know. To be, to be honest with you, I don't know why it feels odd to me, but it does. And frankly, I think the album just lacks this kind of power that it needed. You know, there are a couple songs on there where the power is definitely present. You know, Victimized, Lost in the Echo, um, Lies, Greed, Misery. You, you definitely sense the power there. But then there are other songs on there that aren't nearly as powerful and you feel like they should be, you know, I feel like burn it down should be more powerful than it is, you know, because it's meant to be, it's just not for me. Um, and I like that song. Don't get me wrong. It's just feels like that song is supposed to be more powerful than it is. And, uh, that kind of turns me off. Um, minutes to midnight had this same kind of thing where they had a nice mix of powerful songs in terms of vocals and instruments, and then powerful songs in terms of lyrics and, you know, messages and undertones and everything. Minutes to Midnight had a nice mix of all of that. And it felt like Living Things was trying to do that, of course, in a di relatively different genre. Felt like Living Things was trying to do that, and it just didn't pull it off as well as it could have. You know, I was left feeling like, was I supposed to feel empowered by that song on, on some of them? And then other songs, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I, I feel the power emanating through this. And then some of the other songs, I'm like, yeah, the lyrics really resonate with me. But then there are just a couple songs on there, you know, like Burn It Down, um, In My Remains, you know, that just feel like they were supposed to be powerful and they weren't. For me, anyway. And it just... that. That's mainly why Living Things is uh, down here at number six and not higher on the list. I feel like if uh, In My Remains and Burn It Down and uh, what's another one? Um, I'll Be Gone. I feel like those songs, if they packed more of a punch for me, I would have Living Things ranked much higher than I do. But they don't. So Living Things is ranked where it is. It's just how it is. Um, number five for me is hybrid theory. And I definitely sense that I will get a lot of hate for this. If this video even, uh, makes it out of my own community. Cause I, I, I don't imagine it will, but if it does, then I'm going to be attracting some new viewership and I imagine they're going to be Linkin Park fans And hybrid theory is their most popular album. I know. And I don't dislike the album i quite enjoy it actually but it's ranked number five because i feel like it's not as oh what's the what's the 
scope is a good word for it. Here, let me let me draw a comparison. Meteora and Hybrid Theory are essentially the same album. Meteora, the difference between them is that Meteora feels like it's it was produced better. If that makes any sense, it, it feels like it was mastered better. I don't. I, I, I'm throwing out terminology here. I don't even know what it means, but I'm trying to convey a point, and I don't know if I am. So I'm sorry. But Meteora feels like it was produced much better than Hybrid Theory was. It feels like the sound was much more. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know how to describe it. It felt more produced, which is what I like. And Hybrid Theory just felt like it was what Meteora was, just not as well produced. Which, I mean, some people like that. Some people like the fact that it's not as cookie cutter, I guess, quote unquote, is a good way to describe it. It Its sound is kind of all over the place, and it doesn't sound as concrete and produced, but not for me. I much prefer the produced and... uh well-executed sound of Meteora. And I know this is kind of a weird reason to have Hybrid Theory here, especially since I can't explain it all that well, but that's why I have Hybrid Theory where it is. And um, again, I would like to reiterate that I do enjoy the album quite a bit, so I don't hate it. It's just that's mainly the reason why I would have it at number five instead of higher on the list. Number four is probably going to have to go to Minutes to Midnight. And I really do enjoy this album. I really enjoy all of the albums. I'm going to keep repeating that for as long as this video is going for. I really enjoy all of these albums, and I enjoy Minutes to Midnight. But it feels, as a whole, that the album is very generic. And I think maybe that was what they were going for. Which, no, you know what, no, let me rephrase that, because that makes it sound like Linkin Park sold out to make that album, and I know that they didn't, and I'm not going to accept any other opinion that says otherwise, because they did not sell out, but that's not what this video is about anyway. It just, it feels like the album is very generic. The rock feels very... I, I don't know. It feels very mainstream. There's something very mainstream about the rock that they have in that album. You know, and that's pretty evident with the fact that a lot of their songs, a lot of their hits come from that album. You know, What I've Done, Shadow of the Day, uh, Given Up, Bleed It Out, Leave Out All the Rest. I I mean, those aren't some of those aren't necessarily hits, but they're popular songs within the Linkin Park fan base. So, you know, it just feels like the album is very generic. It just, it feels like it's not really, there really isn't anything special about it. That's just what it feels like. Now, lyrically, the album is very powerful, and I enjoy that aspect of it very much. Some of the songs on there are absolutely mass, absolutely fantastic. I was about to say absolutely masterpieces. That would have been real dumb. Anyway... You know, like a good example of those two combined in that album is The Little Things Give You Away. It's a six and a half minute long song at the end of the album, and it's just perfect. Like, there's something about it that is so perfect. You know, Chester's vocals on there are amazing. You know, um, lyrically, it's very powerful. It's talking about Hurricane Katrina um, and how George Bush should have done more. To help the people that were affected by it and the instrumentation that's in there is very very awesome as well it's not it doesn't pack that you know that real loud punch that some other Linkin Park songs do but when all of the instruments come together towards the end of the song and all of the vocals come together I think it's Chester Mike and Dave Pharrell all coming together to sing at the end of the song. When all of that comes together at the end of the song, holy shit, it is amazing. And you know, same thing applies to another song like Valentine's Day. Really enjoyed that. Um, I actually liked Shadow of the Day. Felt that was a very good song, even though people don't like it because it was more popular, which really doesn't make any sense to me at all. But anyway, 
Really enjoyed that song. I enjoyed Leave Out All the Rest. It just felt like a lot of the songs on there, though, were very generic to some degree. It, not necessarily that any one particular song, aside from what I've done, was generic. It just felt like there was oh, there's just this very generic sound that's attached to the album in every song, and it's noticeable in every song. It's just whether or not that song is able to take that and put its own unique spin on it, you know? Um, I feel like a song that doesn't do that very well is In Between, and people will fucking kill me for saying that because they love that song, and they love that Mike is singing on it. And don't get me wrong, I love Mike singing, but that song just feels bland. It, it, like, nothing dynamic occurs in that song. You know? When the background vocals kick in, I believe it's the bridge. I They kick in right around the bridge, I think, in the song. That's the best part of the song. Nothing else happens. And I guess that's what they were going for, but it just feels so bland that I can't get into it. You know? Um... I mean, that's one song on there that I feel that way about. Hands Held High is kind of the same way to some extent. It's very on the fence as to whether or not I really think it's like that. Um, Bleed It Out kind of has this same kind of thing as well. So it is given up to some extent. So like, there's just this generic sound that kind of overtakes the album. And you can notice it in every song, but whether or not those songs take it and put a unique spin on it is what would make me really like those particular songs. And that's why the album is ranked at number four for me. Number three, I have One More Light. And that's a pretty high ranking for a new album. And I feel like I did not do the album enough justice in my review video for it, but I love that album. I love One More Light. You know, you listen to it, and you listen to it in its entirety, and you get the message they're trying to send in every song. You listen to the lyrics, not only are they real clear, you know, you ex you understand exactly what they're trying to convey, but the focus is on the lyrics instead of the instrumentation. And believe me, I love Linkin Park's instrumentation, I love their rock, I love their sound, but when this is the first album that they've put out where their focus has been on the lyrics rather than the instrumentation. You know, they wrote the lyrics first instead of the instrumentation this time around. That was the first time they've done that for any album. And I believe it worked very well. They were able to build a nice sounding song around beautiful lyrics. You know? I mean, and I think... Perfect examples of this are Nobody Can Save Me, uh, the song One More Light, um, Sorry For Now, Packs a Punch, Halfway Right, Sharp Edges. They're just, there are all of those songs on there tell their own story and they, they do it so well. You know, they don't rely on the instrumentation to tell the story for them. The lyrics tell the story as they are supposed to. And I just really enjoy that. You know, if Talking to Myself was a better song, it would this album would probably be ranked like number two instead of number three. But Talking to Myself just feels very generic. And I know that's kind of ironic coming from a guy who likes the album where their lead single sounded like something that could have come from the chain smokers but hey hey don't try and be condescending like that i was trying to think of words in my head i actually have no idea what i really wanted to say there in response to that but whatever one more light rank number three out of all of the lincoln park albums enjoyed it very much Number two, I have A Thousand Sons. This album is very underrated by Linkin Park. Extremely underrated for what it is. And I, I... It is so good. It is so good on so many different levels. They brought in this new sound that, I mean, you know, Meteora to, from Meteora to Minutes to Midnight, you know, was a drastic change in sound, um, at least at the time. But then they went, they took it even further with A Thousand Sons. 
and they just made it beautiful. Like it, it feels like it feels like I'm listening to some indie underground band instead of Lincoln Park. You know, it feels like there was so much passion behind the lyrics. There was the instrumentation is absolutely fucking amazing in the entire album. You know, every song is beautiful in its own right. You know, you have these epic songs like The Catalyst and Iridescent and um, it's another good one. I mean, When They Come For Me, kind of, sort of. Um, And then you have these uh, songs like The Messenger that are supposed to pack a punch with the lyrics, and they do, and Chester's vocals, which are spot on in that song. You know, so The Messenger, and then you have... um, you have songs like Waiting for the End, which are just real pleasant for your fucking ears. I mean, my God, have you listened to that song? It's like, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. I was going to try and say something funny, but can It's like an orgasm for your ear, basically. There, I said my funny thing. Ha ha, ha ha, jokes. Anyway, like, uh, it's it's hard for me to describe what I really like about it so much. But I just do. You know, there isn't a single song on that album that I don't like at all. You know, it like I I love every single song on the album. And it all flows together so unbelievably well. There are a lot of tracks on there that kind of just serve as, you know, a transition from one song to the next. And it works so well. It works unbelievably well. Better than any other Linkin Park album that they have put out to this day. The flow in that album is unbelievable. Give it a listen, seriously. If there's one album by Linkin Park that you should listen to, if you haven't listened to a single one, or if you've only listened to Hybrid Theory or Meteora, listen to A Thousand Suns. It is amazing. Amazing. And it's so underrated. And that is such a travesty because it deserves to be one of Linkin Park's most popular albums. Absolutely, positively, I will defend it to the end of the earth. You can fight me over it. I will never stop loving this album. Absolutely. But it's not my favorite. (laughs) And I know that's going to sound weird because I just spent all that time gushing over it, but my favorite album from Linkin Park is Meteora. And I kind of went over a little bit why I preferred it when I was talking about Hybrid Theory. It has this very well-produced sound, which I enjoy. But the thing about Meteora is that it is essentially new metal, and new metal brings a punch on its own, no matter who you're listening to. It's just how it sounds. But Linkin Park takes that, and they turned it up a notch with Meteora. They took the the, uh, the punch that new metal already brings, and they just turned it up. You know, you have Chester's vocals on here. You know, some of these songs, he's just screaming at the top of his lungs, and you're like, fucking yes! That shit is awesome. You know, there is some of those songs on there, you know, like Don't Stay is a good one uh, for his vocals. Uh, Lying From You, um, Figure Point Zero Nine, uh, Faint is another good one. Um, And this is just in respect to his vocals on the album. Uh, It's another good one. Uh, From the Inside is another good one for his vocals. You know, like his voice, like just is very powerful in this album and you can sense it and you can feel it and it gets inside you and you're like, yeah, I feel powerful now, even though I didn't even write this shit. I just listened to it and that makes me sad because it makes me realize that I have no creative ability whatsoever, but it just, the album feels so empowering, you know? You just feel like you're in control of all of the things that are plaguing you. And you can just take them and crush them in your hand. And they will all disappear because you feel that powerful. You know, that's what the album does to you. 
It's not necessarily something that can be, that is, oh, what's a good way? It's not necessarily anything really about the album, you know, like the instrumentation or the vocals, although the vocals and instrumentation are really good. It's just the feeling you get from listening to the album. And that's essentially what it it, it is for A Thousand Suns. The feeling that you get from those albums is what makes those albums so great. You know, the... <sighs> It, it it's really hard to describe. You have to listen to the albums in order to understand what I'm talking about. But the feelings that you get from them, man, they in in respect to each album, they give you different feelings. But the feelings that you get are, you know, they're so impactful. You know, Meteora, man, empowers you, makes you feel like you can take on anything. No one's gonna shut you down. A Thousand Suns makes you feel very introspective. You know, you're reflecting on your own life. You're reflecting on the world around you. You know, they both do their own things. Uh, they make you feel their uh, your own special way for each album, you know. And Linkin Park in all of their albums does that to some respect. But in A Thousand Suns and in Meteora, they execute that so well on so many fronts. But uh, Meteora is my favorite you know, A Thousand Suns was a close close second, very close second. Um, then I had One More Light, and I had Minutes to Midnight, Hybrid Theory, Living Things, and The Hunting Party. So that is my ranking for the Linkin Park albums. If you disagree with my opinion, comment section is right down there. I l would love to see what you guys have to say. You know, how you would rank your own albums, what made you like certain albums, what made you dislike certain albums, etc., etc., etc. The comment section is there, and I will be reading through every comment if I get any. So, there you go. And uh, if you guys enjoyed watching the video and listening to me ramble on and on and on, uh, please like it, share it with your friends, let me know that you want to see more of these kind of videos. I understand that this necessarily wasn't a review video, but it was a video that I wanted to make. So I decided, fuck it, I'm going to make it whatever. So here it is. And you just, if you're here, then you watch through all of it. Thank you very much. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of content. I'm beginning to get into this review content. Not that this necessarily falls under that. I just explained that. But... I'm beginning to get into this kind of review content. So it, it, it's still new to me. And as a result, videos are probably going to be on the longer side as I take longer to explain what I want to explain. And they're probably going to be more cringeworthy as well because the commentary won't be as spot on as I want it to be. But if you if you enjoyed this video and you in, if you watched the One More Light uh, album review video and you enjoyed that as well, subscribe to the channel because I'm bringing in more of it not just album reviews i'm you know i'm bringing in uh song reviews tv show reviews and uh movie reviews so look forward to those as well and uh thank you guys so much for watching i love you very much and i'll talk to you later